Hey everyone, welcome to Revolutionary Health. Uh, this is an exciting initiative uh, from the Counter and Yoder Project. The Counter and Yoder Project is a national black women's advocacy organization that seeks to amplify the voices of black women. I'm Charles Stevens, the executive director, and I'm joined with David Melbranch. David, could you introduce yourself? Hey everybody, uh, David Melbranch, I'm an internal medicine physician. Okay, we're not supposed to look again. <laughs> like I have one thing, which is we look there. You can look there. Okay, I look there. Um, so I want to say a little bit about why why we're doing this Facebook Live and what brings us together. Um, yeah, David and I have been having a series of conversations about really wanting to provide a forum to talk about health, mm -hmm. but talk about health in a way that centralizes pleasure that makes it not scary, that doesn't pathologize our community. And so much of the health information that I know that I see, you know, often is extremely, um, you know, it's, it's, it's filled with stigma. Right. Um, it's filled, it's very fear-based. Yeah. So part of, obviously, the, the, what we hope to do with counter narrative project is really countering the narrative. What that also means is countering health messages. So we're taking questions. <laughs> we're taking questions. So if you um, feel inspired, any question you have on any health topic, just drop in the comments, let us know what you think. Also, um, you know, make sure that you like us on Facebook, so please like the Facebook page. And I'm drawing our email list at thecounternarrative.org. Oh, and David, we have, a, we have a disclaimer that we need to say. Yeah, we just want to say that um, I'm, a, I'm a board certified internal medicine doctor. I've been practicing probably for about 16, 17 years now. Um, but we're going to try to get practical information in a very uncompromisingly black and gay fashion. Um, and so it will be a little bit raw. We will be able to curse. We will be able to use terms. There's not going to be <laughs> any um, any terms that or topics that we'll say that you shouldn't actually be a part of or you shouldn't ask us. Uh, but obviously, we give out medical information. But the best thing for you to do is to go back to your medical provider uh, and go see someone. We'll give you some resources about some topics, give you some answers, tell you the things we don't know everything about. Uh, but the main thing is that I'm um, stimulating conversation and so that when you guys feel more armed and feel a lot more empowered with your health decision making and some of the education we may be able to provide, uh, that way you can bring that to your health care providers and come in a little better armed to you know fight for your health. Hey David, oh hey Daniel, Jordan, hey Walter, I see a few folks are joining us. Um, Walter said he prefers the raw honesty. <laughs> exactly, you get the raw honesty. It's going to be really honest, let's we'll see how this goes. Oh, I see a question already. Um, Daniel's asking if you could speak to hepatitis C and HIV within young black women. Um, uh, grow, is it growing, right? or could you speak to that? Yeah, I think hepatitis C is one of those viruses where uh, we were just talking about that too. We were talking about that before. Um, it's a it's a virus that can affect the liver. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with it. Um, it actually is a recommended screening test to get for people who are baby boomers, so people born between 1945 and 1965, but after that it's not a recommended screening test. But the virus basically goes into the liver, affects the liver, and it's the one of the three um, hepatitides that we talk about, the hepatitis viruses, um, A, B, and C. That's the one that really causes long-term damage. Um, there are cures for it, and when we talk about black gay men, what we've seen is uh, not necessarily an uptick with it. We've seen a, a lot of areas in the country where there's been a high incidence or there's been um, little outbreaks of hepatitis C among gay men. And so you'll see like acute hepatitis C where you get symptoms like nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, eyes will get yellow, uh, those kind of things. It is a treatable condition, but again, I think when we talk about HIV, we talk about black gay men, and we talk about how high the rates are with HIV among black gay men, hepatitis C is transmitted through some of the same uh, mechanisms. And so with uh, safe se un unsafe sex or what they call condom sex, you can have it, you can get it from that. Um, also from IV drug use, uh, if people are using meth, and I think when we talk about some things, and Charles, you, you talk about this a lot, Sometimes we have been in denial about black gay men, particularly young black gay men, and the meth epidemic. And so meth can be snorted, inhaled, and injected. And so when you're thinking about hepatitis C, HIV, and the meth epidemic, they all kind of go hand in hand. And so it's something that I would recommend for most of our young and older black gay men out there. If you're going to see a medical provider, 
and you're going to get screen tests for sexually transmitted infections, and you are sexually active, or if you are actively meth using or injecting any other kinds of drugs, make sure you have them get a blood test for hepatitis C. It's a simple test to do. And the main thing now is that we're, we're living in a time when it's curable. So we do have several antiviral medications that can actually cure hepatitis C in as little as two months. Uh, the standard more so now is three months that you take a pill a day. But some of these medications you can actually get away with eradicating the virus in two months, and that's very different from HIV. Awesome. One of the questions we got in advance, because <laughs> when we were starting this process, I reached out to some trusted folks about like ideas for questions that right, I had right. that I could ask David. So one of the questions that we got was around crabs. Um, <laughs> the, the person that asked the question was saying that they don't hear so much about crabs anymore. Um, David, could you just speak a little bit about that and uh, <laughs> like what we should know and how we should be thinking about it? Yeah, I think that's one of the um, sexually transmitted infections or STIs that a lot of people don't uh, focus on anymore. Hey, Alvin. Um, I see Alvin Jordan. And so it's one of those things where uh, we don't talk about crabs, we talk about gonorrhea, chlamydia, herpes, stuff like that. Uh, crabs is basically called, caused by a crab louse, or the singular of lice. And so the thing to know about crabs is that it can actually be uh, contracted or passed on through bedding, clothing, towels. So even if you're laying up with somebody in bed and you're rubbing up against each other and you use condoms when you have sex, the crabs actually, these little lice kind of attach to the groin area, they attach to hair follicles, and they lay their eggs in wow. the hair follicles. And that's how they reproduce. And the symptoms that people have is like intense itching in the groin area, um, a lot of redness and bleeding from that itching, uh, so on and so forth. And when you go in to see a medical provider, they'll actually sometimes be able to pull the crabs right off the hair follicle of your pubic hair, which is kind of gross when a lot of people think about it. And some people have actually come into my office and actually had the crab in a little jar after they pulled off from the pubic hair. So that can happen. Um, what you need to do, there's actually a cream that's by a prescription called permethrin. And what you can do is put that over your whole entire body. You have to put it from head to toe, everything. Um, and when you do that, you have to leave it on for about eight to 14 hours. So people say to do it before you go to bed, be completely naked, um, get in your bed, wear that the whole night, and then in the morning you take a shower and wash it off. Uh, the other important thing to do is that since crabs do attach to bedding and clothing and towels and those kind of things, you have to make sure you wash everything hardcore. Flip the bed over, wash all your towels, wash all your sheets, wash everything that you have before that you think may have been affected to make sure that it doesn't stick to it. All right, everyone, don't forget to ask your questions in the comments and we'll uh, get them to David. Also, just saying, we may not get to everyone's question, so don't get mad at us if we don't answer your question this time, but please, uh, um, you know, but we'll, we'll try to get to as many questions. We'll probably do this for 30 and I got, minutes. And I got my own questions, too, so I, may, I, I, I have questions, too, that I want to. So we talked a lot about STDs it's, um, and SD, STIs. Let's see if we can pivot a little bit. Okay. Um, talk about what are, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. So a question that we often, that I've, that I've gotten from a few folks is about bottom. <laughs> Okay. And what are some ways that if someone wants to bottom, how do they prepare for it? Right, right. Um, and what are some tips uh, to have a, a pleasurable, a pleasurable oh, experience. experience? Oh my God, this is like a complete thirty-minute <laughs> question unto itself. Um, so with bottoming, for those of you who are out there and maybe not experienced with bottoming or want to know how you can do it the safest way possible. Um, <laughs> Actually, it's funny because I remember Samson McCormick had a great video uh, on bottoming, and which I think a lot of people, if you check this out on Sam, Samson McCormick's, uh, he's a, a local, not local, I'm sorry. He's based, he's, in based in DC, black yeah. comedian, he's funny as hell. Um, but he had actually a YouTube video on it, which was very helpful, um, and in tongue in cheek, but it was actually a pretty good resource as far as I was concerned. So I, I think one of the things that you can do with bottoming, and people worry about it, the reason why people are concerned about bottoming, about cleaning themselves, mm -hmm. is because they don't want to cause a dirty deal. They don't want what to- could you, hold up now, you can't just say that. What could you, what is a dirty deal? So a dirty deal, deal means that someone who's a bottom hasn't cleaned out, and so when the top- That's not very judgy. When it's not judgy. So they supposedly haven't cleaned out as much, and so when the top actually um, gets through penetrating them, um, and they pull out, there's a lot of fecal matter, there's mm -hmm. a lot of shit that comes out. And so, shit happens, right? Yeah, shit does happen. And so the thing is, is that a lot of people shame that, and a lot of people have had um, a lot of gossip about people that um, will have 
dirty deals or someone that you know won't be as clean as folks want them to be. And so a lot of people are really worried about that. And how can I be clean and how can I still enjoy bottoming and still be safe? And so there are a few things that people do. The simple things they talk about is one, eating a lot of fiber in your diet. So your bowel movements are regular. Second thing is drinking a lot of water because if you drink a lot of water, the water is going to be in your intestines and it helps the bowel movements to kind of flow. Um, there are some people who won't eat for an entire day beforehand to make sure that nothing actually comes through. I don't know if I necessarily advocate that because I don't want you to pass out from low <laughs> blood sugar, but that's one thing that people do. Other people will use enemas, douches, um, little syringes with bulbs that they'll put water inside of the anus. And what a lot of people do, and there are some good instructional videos on this, uh, people will inject a, a few cc's of water into the rectal area. It's only about maybe six to eight centimeters. Let it sit in there for about one to two minutes. A lot of people jump up and down and kind of get it around and then go ahead and get rid of it. Um, that is actually clean. I'm sorry, is safe though? Uh, yeah, the, the, the question is whether it's actually safe. And a lot of studies, research studies with uh, medical personnel and you know gay men have found that it actually in, irritates the inside of the rectum. And so it, it, it's just simple water by itself a lot of times can irritate the inside of the rectum. Okay. Um, some of the other things that we use are glycerin, uh, other kinds of substances that can be used in enemas and in uh, different kinds of douches. Mm -hmm. And those may be a little bit safer, but think about your rectum as kind of its own little microenvironment. So you've got a lot of sebaceous glands that se secrete a lot of different oils. Um, and then you have a lot of different bacteria, good bacteria that live in there. And so when you're kind of washing everything out, it may actually disrupt some of the homeostasis or some of the balance that's going on in there and may actually be more of a risk for HIV and other STIs than you think. So the, the take home message, you have to be safe about it. There are good resources online about anal health and about douching. The douching um, websites that I've seen and articles that I've seen that have been pretty decent were in the Huffington Post, uh, vice.com, uh, betablog.org, um, and also the Advocate had a good article. When you Go to some of the places like the cdc.gov website when you look at um, thebody.com, mayoclinic.com, or mayoclinic.org, I'm sorry. Those tend to focus more on STIs and transmission and pathology and disease. So my best advice to folks out there is to read as much as you can about it and then go to your medical provider and bring up some of these topics. Be honest about what you're using to clean yourself how you do it, um, if you're experiencing any symptoms back there, and see what kind of conversation you can have. Some medical providers may not be as comfortable talking about this kind of stuff than others, so you have to kind of shop around and see what you can find. But I think the important thing is to be honest with yourself and your providers about what you're doing, and then that way you can kind of come up with a good decision or a good plan about how you can stay safe and uh, sex positive, enjoy having anal sex, enjoy yes. bottoming, right? Um, and be clean, all those good things that you want. And there's a way you can have it all. It's intersectional. Oh wow! Wow! I think it's like Walter says that uh, he said "shitty kitty" is the technical term. Shitty kitty is so the technical just term. So we, okay, just we just know want to make sure. Thank you, Walter. <laughs> uh, I see lots of other comments. Um, hey, Richard! Thanks for joining us. There's lots of comments around crabs. Okay. Um, actually, there's another question to follow up about the crabs. Sure. Piece about do you still have to shave? Yes, 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 and that's a good point. Thank you, whoever uh, wrote that comment. That was Daniel. Yeah, Daniel, thank you. So a lot of people actually will shave your pubic hair um, down just so you can get all the hairs down, and that's a great point because, and I'm sorry that I forgot to mention that, because like I said, when the crabs actually get on your pubic hair and they lay their eggs, if you shave everything down, you can wash everything out, and then the permethrin or the medication gets in uh, quicker and deeper into the hair follicle. The other thing I will mention is that there's an over-the-counter cream that does the same thing. It's called NYX. Or red, I think, is another one, but NYX is the one that I've seen over the counter. But it's not as strong as the prescription strength permethrin. That you, but you have to get a prescription for that. Mm. Um, going into some other questions, yeah. uh, could you? Someone asked about um, parasites in in rimming or in a lingus. Sure. Could you speak to that? Sure. So um, if you're going down on somebody and you're eating their ass. Um, there are a lot of things that you can actually get. We talk about gonorrhea, chlamydia, we talk about uh, herpes, uh, we talk about warts, um, you can get syphilis, it's also skin to skin. So if you're performing analingus or eating somebody's ass out or tossing a salad, um, or whatever Walter wants to say is the best uh, <laughs> the scientific, the scientific term to use for it. Um, the thing is that you can get a number of things. So I think the question was about parasites, and two of the parasites that we talk about 
with gay men are Giardia, and then this one called Entamoeba histolytica. And both of those can cause kind of cramping, inflammation in the lower intestines, um, diarrhea, and bad pain. And so if someone actually has that, and then you're eating their ass, you can get it, so you can get sick as a result. The other thing that you want to look out for is also hepatitis A. And so hepatitis A is one of those uh, viruses, again, one of the viruses that hits the liver, and it can basically get into the GI tract and get into your intestines, get into your stomach, and when you have a bowel movement, it comes out that way, and so the virus can shed that way. So when someone's eating someone's ass, they can still get exposed to hepatitis A. And so that's a virus, but you want to be careful for parasites, uh, viruses, bacteria, all the sorts. So I think, again, the, the question is, or one of the main take-homes is going to be, you know, people talk about condoms with intercourse, and when I'm screwing, do I need to wear a condom? And is it safe to have oral sex and eat somebody's ass? It is safe, and we want you to have fun, and we want you to eat and be pleasurable, but just be mindful of some of the things that can happen. Yes. Um, but still enjoy it. Enjoy a good salad when you can. <laughs> we talked a lot about, and I know we're moving really fast, or, you know, we only got 30 minutes. We only got 30 minutes. Yes. God. I told Charles um, that we needed an hour, but he didn't believe me. And I didn't think, well, y'all if y'all think it should be an hour, hour let us know in the comments. Do you, I mean, you know, we're test, test driving this. <laughs> um, I do want to pivot to mental health. We talk a lot about physical health and right. sexual health specifically. Right. Um, you know, I talk to brothers all the time that are struggling with <laughs> emotional wellness and struggling with depression. Um, David, could you just say a little bit about ways that people can um, address depression that might be experiencing it? Or um, Yeah, I, th I think there's a lot of community stigma. There's a lot of, uh, I don't think it's a black gay thing in general. I think it's a societal thing. Yeah. Um, and especially with men, we don't allow ourselves to get depressed or allow ourselves to get down about things like that. And you're seen as kind of weak and not masculine if you are. but. The more I hear, I actually heard something about some NBA players recently. Um, Kevin Love actually said something about he was struggling with anxiety. Someone else was struggling with depression. And so these things happen. And so I think, I think as we see more uh, famous people, celebrities, whether they be athletes or entertainers, it brings more to the attention of this. And I think when you're feeling depressed, a lot of people get the image of kind of someone who is sitting at home crying, they're curled up in the corner, they're flicking a light on and off and, you know, they're just really, really down. But depression actually can manifest in other ways. And I think particularly when it comes to black men and black gay men, we may manifest it a little bit differently. So it may be that you don't really enjoy doing the things you typically like doing. You're not being as social as you usually are. You tend to get a little bit angry or fire off at people more than usual. And so those kind of things can all happen. So I think it's important for us to recognize that depression, and even if we want to stretch it out to anxiety, doesn't fit in a box of specific symptoms. So we all know our bodies, we know, all know our patterns, whether it be our mental health, our behavioral health, our physical health, our spiritual health. And I think the important thing to know is when something's off kilter. Mm -hmm. So what is your normal? There's not a specific normal, but what is your normal flow during the day? And if you feel like you're not doing the things you usually do, you're not getting enjoyment out of the things that you usually do, you could be sleeping too much, you could be eating too much or drinking too much, you may be going out and dealing with stress by you know, having sex, gambling, uh, doing whatever you do, like if these things aren't natural things that you're doing or aren't kind of part of your norm, mm. you may be a little bit off. So that's when you would want to probably see somebody. And even if you don't see a mental health professional, like a social worker or a therapist, go and talk to a friend. Mm. Um, talk to somebody if you trust people in your church, in your family. Mention it to somebody so somebody knows what's going on. And I think even when I think about what's happening um, with that brother from the CDC right now, yeah. and a lot of the story about that, if you all don't know about um, the story, it's a, a, a doctor who was at the CDC that just disappeared about three or four weeks ago, and no one can find him. And there have been these circulating stories that um, he was stressed out of the job, he didn't get some kind of promotion, promotion. things like that happened, and then all of a sudden he disappeared. So I think to your point about depression, one of the things is that we have to be vocal about saying things when we actually feel it or feel something's wrong with us. But the second part of that is that as, as our brothers and as family, um, we have to reach out to each other and check in on each other. And even the people that are the strongest in the community, even the people that are the nurturers, even the ones that seem to have it all together, um, like Charles Stevens, you have to check in from time to time. Please check in with Charles Stevens. Check in with Charles Stevens and make sure he's okay. Check in with David Malbrook. Make sure he's okay. Are you okay? I'm okay. Um, but I, I mean, we're being trivial a little bit. No, no, seriously. But on a serious tip, we really have to make sure we check in with each other because those kind of things happen and they build up. Because I can guarantee you this brother with the CDC, if 
this is what it's about. Yeah. This is built up over a certain period of time. And mm -hmm. we may put it on him like, okay, you have to be, it has to be the yeah. onus on you. You have to be the one to reach out and tell somebody when you feel like that. And that isn't the truth. All of us are in a community. And I heard somebody say the black gay community is not supportive of one another. Yeah. And I understood why he said that, but I disagreed with him a lot because I see so many of us supporting one another, but I think there's more we can do. That's the way I look at it. I think we do a good job already, but I think there's a lot more we can do, like checking in with one each other on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, and not assuming that someone's okay just because they're posting on Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat and everything seems to look okay. And I mean, I think it makes such a difference when we're able to reach out to each other. Right. It makes such a difference when we're able just to, to ask. I mean, I think so often we see signs right. and people we right. Observe things, and, I, and sometimes we don't want to pry, or we feel like it's inappropriate, or there's like a boundary. But right. I, I, I can't just stress enough that if you see something, say something. Even something. if you feel like right. if someone's not showing up, you know, often, especially in like sort of activist circles, people sometimes will like it, disconnect a bit or, or step back and, and just check in, like ask how they're doing, because I, I really believe that it it makes such a huge difference. Yeah, and it could be as simple as a text. Like somebody could be kind of going through their day yeah. and kind of really struggling, and you send a text and say, "Hey, I'm just checking on you. You crossed my mind. Is everything okay?" And all of a sudden, the person—it's almost like a lifeline. Someone will reach out and be like, "Oh shit, thank you, thank you for asking about me," because no one has, and especially with the healers and the people that are the pillars of the community. Everybody thinks that they're okay, and they're not always. And it's okay. always an answer. You ask somebody how they're doing. Oh, I'm okay. I'm, okay. I'm good. I'm okay. I'm and you know, and I think so often that's is that really the case? Right. You know. Right. Um, Thank you for that. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, so we talked a bit about sexual health, right. and we talked a bit about mental health. Right. Uh, we got one question, uh, I think related to kind of the physical health or more general health, about vitamins. Uh, right. what, do, what do our community need to know about vitamins and taking vitamins? Do you have recommendations? Um, I know we're like kind of going all over, you know, but I want to make sure we cover as many bases as possible. And also drop in the comments, like ask questions. Yeah, there's... Um, I mean, there's some people that don't believe vitamins do much of anything. Um, I think when you look at vitamins, though, there are real conditions like a low low blood count or anemia that can be caused by vitamin B12 mm. or folate deficiency, which we should be getting from like green leafy vegetables and those kind of things. You have vitamin D deficiency, which people don't realize folks have a lot of times, um, but can manifest as kind of fatigue, sluggishness depression sometimes because you're not getting enough sunlight, you're not getting vitamin D. And so I think a lot of these multivitamins are actually pretty good and have a lot of stuff in them. Obviously, when you get older, um, or if you have a low blood count, a low iron count, you need to supplement your iron. But any of those typical multivitamins usually do pretty well as far as giving you a good balance of like vitamin C, the B vitamins, the D vitamins, those kind of things. And one thing you can also do is kind of check with your medical provider, ask them to see if they use a specific one. Um, I found one that I use actually that is, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but it's actually, I got it on Amazon from the UK. Um, and it, I, for some reason, I thought it smelled better because it smelled like potent, like it had a lot of vitamins in it. <laughs> so we buy the vitamin. Right, right. right, there's a lot of good stuff in there because it stank so good. And so I, I think there's a lot of these multivitamins that are here, whether they come in gummy form or whether they come in pill, pill form. And then obviously there are going to be some ones when you get a little bit older. But be careful about some of the scams, like some mm -hmm. of the things where they're talking about they boost testosterone levels, they do all this other wow. stuff. There's a lot of claims that people make. And if you look at the fine print on the bottom, it'll say not FDA approved. For blah 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 blah. So they'll actually put it on the the box. Oh yeah, it'll be there. It'll be in such it'll be in such small print that you can't really read it. So you have to pay attention. It's kind of similar when you're reading food things, and so you have to actually look when you look at multivitamins as well, um, and see what's going on with them. But I, I don't have a problem with vitamins. Some people will say that vitamins don't really help out somebody's energy or to really supplement them enough. But you never can tell. But the things you may want to get checked out for would be vitamin B uh, B12. I'm sorry. Uh, folate and then vitamin D. Um, vitamin C deficiency is a little bit more rare. You don't see that. And that usually all these happen in kind of older age. They build up over time. They're not things that just happen like that. Like yeah. it has to take a little bit of time for you to become deficient in one of those vitamins. Are there, um, are there any, what do you call it? Like herbal, uh, rather than take, like I know some folks don't want to take like vitamin or pills. They rather have a more uh, sort of herbal right. or 
um, like hold, uh, holistic, holistic approach. Yeah, some yeah. people do St. John's Ward, some people do ginseng, some people uh, do other kinds of supplements like that, herbal supplement. Milk thistle, I think, is one that's been promoted for liver health. So those kind of things, again, but it's one of those things with the scientific studies, following people along to see how it helps. But you'll talk to some people in, who will swear that, you know, ginseng, St. John's Ward help with their mood stabilization, with their memory, um, with their being able to focus on details and concentrate at work. Uh, those kind of things can all help. So excellent. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm sort of thinking about some of the conversations that we've had and and what can sort of set this apart in terms of how we talk about health and health topics. And I can already hear people sort of like the voice in my head, like, okay, you know, but uh, this has to be revolutionary, right? Um, <laughs> what is revolutionary? And so, in our last few minutes, I was just wondering if you could speak to, you know, like, what are some of the most revolutionary things that we as black gay men can do in our lives to take care of ourselves um, and each other? Yeah, I think that was like loving ourselves and loving each other a little bit more. I think that has to start off. A hug can go a long way, I know. Huh? A hug, a hug can, can go, go a long, long way. way. A check-in can go a long way. Um, I think having forums like this, uh, supporting some of the organizations that do some amazing work, Talk about Daniel Griffin and Thrive SS. You talk about um, Deshaun Usher with Moby. Absolutely. Um, you talk about Native Son. Uh, you talk about Lamar Bell Terry oh, and the work he's doing with SOS. Like there are a lot of good organizations. So I think when we, it, it's similar to the way we want to support Black movies, the way we want to support Black businesses. I think we have to support our Black gay brothers. This is the Gentlemen's Foundation. Juan and G, like supporting the like efforts that they do, and they're doing phenomenal work. And so there's a lot of different um, organizations, people, uh, brothers that are not only here in Atlanta, but across the country that we can support. And then on a smaller level, I think it is about the family, because we're all sitting together, and some of us have been shunned by our family, mm -hmm. uh, our biological families. Some of yeah. us feel ostracized from our churches, and some of us are dealing with a lot of trauma. And so the friendships that we make with other black gay men, these are our brothers, these are our life. It's our family. Yeah, it's our own family. family. Yeah. And, and so for me, I know, you know, there are, uh, I have several uh, brothers who I would trust with my life, mm -hmm. who I, I wasn't born into the same family. We didn't know each other when we were young. We didn't grow up with each other. But because we check in on each other, because we're consistent with each other, because we understand each other, it's just a phenomenal thing. So and then we talk about revolutionary health. It's about kind of loving ourselves, telling our own narrative, Telling our counter narrative, if you yeah, will, um, yeah. but telling our own narrative so other people don't tell it for us. Because what's mm -hmm. happening is that a lot of people are telling our stories for us. And so the more venues that we can support of each other, there's enough space that we don't have to be competitive with this. Mm -hmm. It's about like if someone else came up with a revolutionary health concept and did a Facebook Live. Of course, I'm going to support that. Of course, you're going to support that. Well, but I'm support it. I'm support it. But literally, support it. Yeah, literally because there's enough room for us out to here, and people room. should be able to choose. And just because mm -hmm. there's one black gay research group or there's one black gay organization doesn't mean That's there's amazing. not room for others. There's room for all but, of us to be involved. In this. David, I would like to um, and thank you so much for that. I I, I really love. The, just urging, like, our institutions and organizations also need to be healthy. Absolutely. Part of how they're healthy Absolutely. is that we have to support them, we have to nurture them. Absolutely. And so it's not just a competition, but I, I wonder if you could speak to this piece about um, friendships. Right. I think a lot of us, especially in places like New York and DC and Atlanta that I've heard, um, you know, we struggle in our 30s and 40s and older, perhaps, right. to make friends, to find new friends, like to find our tribe. Um, there are those of us that might have had, you know, really close friendships in our twenties, and for whatever reasons, no we might, yeah, when we find our, those those people in my life in in our, in our lives anymore. So, what does it mean in terms of thinking about health very holistically? What does it mean to be able to make friends, to find community um, as part of one's health plan? Oh, what does it mean to be able to do that, especially once you know you're you're your your forties and fifties, and right. you're you know you're older, so you're not in college, you're not in you know you're not. I think I, I found that, for example, you're younger, you're just more connected to it. Mm -hmm. But as you get older, it just gets a little bit harder. You just kind of speak to like finding your tribe. So yeah, yeah no, I, I think you're, you're talking about it now. And I think it's, a, it's about being connected. Mm -hmm. And so that may change over time. And so being connected, that means that means something different for everybody. Like I know for me, what, what was connected back in my 20s is very different from now. Like back in my 20s, I needed to hear from somebody. Like my friends, we need to check in every day. How you doing? How was your day? How was this? How was that? As I get older, 
Like that shit kind of gets on my nerves a little bit more. So I'm like, <laughs> you know, I don't need to hear from you say every day, but I do want to check in from time to time. Mm -hmm. Or I do want you to be there when the shit hits the fan. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a very qualitative person. That's my research. That's my work. That's how I approach my friendship. So it's almost like I don't care the number of times that we talk, but I do care that when we do talk, it's rich and meaningful, or when we do hang out, it's rich and meaningful. So I cherish those moments. And so it is harder to make friends when you get a little bit older and you're not doing brunch every Sunday, you're not, you know, Sunday, <laughs> fun day, you're not doing all that stuff every time. And it's, it, it's a different dynamic. So you got to figure out where you're changing as a human being and what your needs are and reaching out. Like I realized over time that I'm more nerdy and introverted than I was in my twenties. And people didn't realize that. But like I need somebody if somebody says, let's go out to the club, I'm like, eh. But if someone says, you wanna just um watch a movie or go and do this or go to some little lounge and have a drink, then I'm like, I'm all for it. So I think it just depends. You have to like feel out what you're feeling at the time and what you need from your friends and what you need to feel connected. Like, what would it take to make you feel connected to your community and to other loved ones? And what's going to nourish you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I, I've definitely found that you have to you have to work at it. You have to build. You have to feed your relationships. You have to yeah. nurture them. You have to check on people. You have to make time. Yeah. You know, I think that part of what happens, at least in my experience, um, especially in my thirties, is like life gets so busy and so full. But you have to have to make time for people. Right. You have to invest in new relationships. Right. You have to. You know, even something like, you know, one of the things that I do is that I try to reach out, you know, I try to send a just thinking about you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, or I'll, you know, send an email, right. you know, I typically prefer email mm -hmm. um, or making time for coffee, you know, mm -hmm. or just catching up or inviting folks to stuff. I mean, it's so, mm -hmm. so, so important. And, you know, there's so many health benefits to not to not being isolated, to being a part of the community. Right. And so I, I think as black gay men, we absolutely have to sort of make that one of our core values in terms of our health. Um, but with that, um, this was our first Facebook Live on Revolutionary Health. This is so exciting, right? <laughs> um, thank you for tuning in, folks. Thank for you tuning guys. in. Please make sure you like our Facebook page. Um, and also check that we're going to also, um, this is going to appear on our YouTube channel. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that uh, you get notifications as we post. And this is going to be an incredible journey. We're going to be here every Tuesday, big commitment, every yeah. Tuesday at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, so check us out. Um, let us know what you think. Um, and and thank you so much, David. Do you have any final thoughts? No, I just want to thank everybody who's watching and uh, give any feedback. Johnny's um, waving. Give any feedback. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> Anything you want to see in the future? Like be nice have though. To do. Um, we're trying to get a bunch of different health experts. Not not just myself, but a bunch of other experts in the Atlanta area and around the country to kind of come in and guest with Charles and Johnny and make sure that we're Indeed, that providing some good it. information. Of course it's going to be me. I'm going to be part of this no matter what. Yeah, CMP forever. CMP. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mbaku. Mbaku.